Hello friends, I am Rajesh Durbala and in this all new episode, we are going to discuss the inter-firm rivalry, that's the competition in your market. So we would like to go deeper into what are the factors which result in the altering of intensity of firm rivalry. Okay, So we will try to explore the factors which contribute to the intensity of rivalry among firms. So this is my learning outcome for today. That is to summarize the factors contributing to intensity of inter-firm rivalry. So very simple. We will be just going through the various factors which alter, you know, either increase the intensity of the inter-firm rivalry or decrease it. Let's see. So these are the various factors which contribute to the enhanced inter-firm rivalry. First and foremost is the low barriers. So when you have those low barriers to entry into the market, there would be a lot of competitors who can easily enter that market and makes the rivalry intense, fierce. I'll give you an example. Now, for instance, let us say every market, every city or every town has got an area which has got a lot of coaching centers or coaching institutes. So you would find that it becomes very easy. There are no restrictions, no uh, regulations for coaching industry. So all these new coaching centers which come up, they simply pop up into those crowded areas where the market is already established. So as it's easy to start any new coaching center, people keep on starting their coaching centers. And that creates a lot of rivalry within the existing firms. So the low barriers, that is to say, when you do not have any restrictions, any regulations or any legislations, it becomes easy for any new competitor to enter into that market. So if there are low barriers, the rivalry between firms would be enhanced. OK, so going to the next. Now, the contrary to that, even if I have barriers to entry and exit in any market, that also would lead to enhanced inter-firm rivalry. Okay. The first one, the government policies. If I have a very strongly regulated market, in that sense, it becomes quite difficult for new firms to enter, right? Because all of them need to fulfill the stipulated regulations of the government, which may be difficult. So in such a case, what happens, there would be few players and that would lead to an imperfect competition in the market. So there would be few but very large players who would like to dominate. There would be cutthroat competition among those few players. The same way you have these costs, many a times entering into a particular industry, for instance, let us say telecom, entering into telecom is quite Cumbersome, I would say, okay, because the investments that you require to set up that is again exorbitant at the same time, the gestation period for setting up your infrastructure and acquiring new customers. So that what that's what is called the gestation period when a firm starts making money and tries to become profitable. So the gestation period is also quite high. The sunk costs are quite high that again creates barriers to entry or exit from the market. Because before I enter, I need to calculate all the huge investments, the sunk costs I need to incur. At the same time, if things don't work out, what do I do with my sunk costs? So it becomes very easy for me. It becomes very difficult for me to even exit from the market. So even in such a case, when the costs involved are quite high, it becomes very difficult for new players to enter and those existing players to exit. So again, that creates an imperfect competition situation in the market and that creates the firm's rivalry within the existing markets. That is what we are experiencing right now within Geo, Vodafone and Idea, that is we right now, Geo, V and Airtel, right? The, initially, if you just recall in the telecom industry also, we had a quite number of players, but now the every, the entire market is shrunk to three players. 
and the no new player is planning or willing to come into this industry probably just because of the costs involved and then third one is the presence of strong brands when there are some strong brands which are present in the market that also may create some entry barriers so in order to you know in order to eliminate such kind of entry barriers big firms like for example coca cola it acquired thumbs up from parley right because thumbs up was already a big brand in the country in the cola segment so when coke tries to enter the market it finds thumbs up could be a possible probable barrier so it acquires it the same way you would see avian is planning to acquire bislery bislery which has got a great presence in the indian market so these the presence and prevalence of strong brands that could also cause an entry barrier so with that what happens the rivalry becomes very intense and fierce coming to the fourth one that is the customer the customer also plays a very important and significant role now for instance let us say in the current scenario you see that uh, we are riding high on our nationalist sentiments in india and right now the kind of face off that we are experiencing with china at the borders the nationalist sentiments of the customers are you know uh, they are simply encouraged to buy only indian products and indian brands and they are trying to do away with anything that is chinese now at this point of a time the customer is you know acting as a barrier to entry for any kind of chinese products into indian market now the upcoming diwali season you have seen or maybe you must have been experiencing some social media posts and shares which are encouraging you to buy the indian products only for this diwali and discouraging you from buying anything that is chinese so here the customer himself is acting as a barrier and thus creating an imperfect market scenario where the rivalry within the existing indian firms which could be few in number would become intense coming to technology many a times technology becomes an overriding force or factor which can dissuade new firms from entering into the segment now for instance uh, the private banks in india for, uh, for instance the icici bank hdfc bank they started you know the moment they entered the banking sphere they started with all high tech banking systems they were the people to introduce the core banking in india subsequently even the giant like sbi had to adopt such kind of technologies now what happens when such kind of investment in technology happens it makes the new firms deter or it is a discouragement for new firms or small firms to enter into that segment now simple example there could be small local banks like for instance in punjab we have something called capital small finance bank the moment you experience their net banking or their mobile app banking it's just pathetic it's just hopeless when i compare it with the kind of sophistication it has in icici app or you know i mobile and the hdfc app now that's the difference now when customers experience such kind of sophistication in technology they would never encourage the small players who do not have an edge in technology so technology also can act as a deterrent or a barrier for entry of new firms and then the number of firms within the market get limited and restricted and the rivalry between them could be intense and fierce likewise the next and the last one is the lack of any credible competition even if i don't have any credible competition in the market for instance let us say just to take the political scenario in the country right now we simply keep on questioning you know we keep on asking if not modi then who there is no credible opposition this is what we say 
the same logic is applicable in the market as well in business as well if you do not have a credible competition even in that kind of a situation there would be an imperfect competition in the market and the firms within the market their rivalry would become intense fine so these are the various barriers or these are the various factors which contribute to enhanced interfirm rivalry i hope you like this video if you have liked it do like share and subscribe to my channel spread the good word thank you have a nice day bye bye